Just when the world thought the United States might give the development of new aircrafts a break, especially after spending billions of dollars on its recently developed next-generation fighter jets, this nation does otherwise and embarks on another amazing project that the world is not ready for. This aircraft is unlike anything that the U.S. has ever created, and its capabilities have had advanced nations questioning their own expertise. What is the U.S. developing? What are the capabilities it boasts? Join us as we reveal the details of the new supersonic nuclear tiny jet that the USAF is testing. The United States has invested in a brand new project with a different weapon company, the Beechcraft. It is important to note that after the Second World War in 1930, the T-6 trainer was the main trainer that was utilized by the United States. But at the beginning of 1953, the preference shifted and Beechcraft T-44 replaced the Texan trainer. Beechcraft is an American company that specializes in the development of airplanes for both civilian and military use. It is now owned by Textron Aviation that is based in Wichita, Kansas. Originally, Beechcraft was part of the Beech Aircraft Corporation, which made all kinds of aircraft from small ones to large ones. Our main focus would be on the smaller ones, like what the United States is developing. Starting from the most popular light attack aircraft, the Wolverine. The design of this tiny jet is similar to that of the T-6 series with a wingspan that measures about 33 feet. It has the capacity for two people and has a maximum takeoff weight of 4.5 tons, and the maximum payload comes up to 1.86 tons. It was tested back in 2015, during the ample strike exercise that was organized by NATO in the Czech Republic. It is a testament to its capability of taking on air-to-land missions since it was successful in seven of the tests that it was involved in. The fighter is propelled by the powerful Pratt and Whitney Canada PT-6A-68 turboprop engine and a four-bladed propeller in the front. The engine enables the Wolverine to reach a maximum speed of about 514 miles per hour. It is able to reach its destination of almost 2,000 miles away due to its four internal fuel tanks. In addition to its capacity, the Wolverine covers a wide mission spectrum that includes training, manned intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, and light precision attack. Its non-traditional capabilities are ideal for internal defense and civil support missions. In March 2020, the United States Air Force placed a 70.2 million order for two AT-6E Wolverine aircraft. The very first aircraft was delivered to the Air Force in February 2021. It was operated by the 81st Fighter Squadron. However, the aircraft were returned to Beechcraft in 2022. The next on the list is the Pocket Fire. It was developed by the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and Sevens under the Indian Air Force. This aircraft is a single-seater that has the ability to fly at insane supersonic speeds. The jet had its first flight in April 2007, and it entered service nine years later. 32 units have been built and in service since it became operational. This aircraft is 43 foot long and has an empty rod of 4.45 tons. It has a takeoff weight of 9.5 tons. It is powered by a single GE F404 GE N20 turbofan engine that will allow it to reach a speed of 1,380 miles per hour. It can reach anything within an 850 mile radius without being refueled because it has a large fuel capacity. It is equipped with Python 5 Darby and Astra BV Ram air-to-air -air missiles. Also, there are the TV-guided standoff air-to-surface missiles, KAB-15L laser-guided bombs with a firing range of 50 rounds in a single second. This is a feature that is uncommon for fighters. The design of this next fighter is one that the aviation industry has not recovered from. In the 1940s, the DH-99 was designed by Major Frank Halford, who, with his innovation, proved that fighters can be propelled on a single engine. Back then, there was a popular belief that just one engine was not enough to propel a fighter, but Frank proved them wrong. The fighter was a metal aircraft with two booms and a short jet pipe, which meant it lost less power compared to regular planes. 
Later, they changed the prototype to use a mixture of wood and metal, and they renamed it DH-100. Jeffrey de Havilland Jr., the main test pilot, flew the prototype LZ-548G on September 29, 1943. The production version, Vampire MK-1, had its first flight in April 1945, but it was not ready for combat until after the Second World War. The fighter's propulsion system is the formidable DH Goblin. Early Goblin engines had a short range, a common issue with early jets, but later engine designs improved the Vampire's fuel capacity and performance. Apart from how it moved and its double-tail setup, it was quite a regular plane. In May 1944, they chose to make it a fast-response jet for the Royal Air Force. In 1946, the Vampire started flying for the RAF, just a few months after the war finished. The Vampire proved to be a really efficient jet, and it quickly became the new choice instead of older fighter planes with piston engines. In its early days, it did a lot of new things in aviation and set some records, like being the first jet plane to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. It remained with the main RAF flying fleet until 1953 when it was taken on other missions like ground attack and training pilots. The RAF retired the Vampire in 1966 when they got another fighter for training, the Falland Nat. This brings us to the formidable Falland Nat. This aircraft has a relatively small size and is a fast fighter aircraft from Britain. This jet was developed due to the need of a cheaper fighter because the regular ones were extremely expensive to afford and also big. The Royal Air Force purchased it to train their pilots and other countries bought it for the sole purpose of fighting and embarking on military missions. Falland mentioned that the jet was better than regular fighter jets because it was considered cheaper, needing less work and time and easier to fix and handle. It can also be moved around easily. The jet is equipped with a special landing gear that allows it to land on any kind of runway. The Nat was made with metal structures and smooth rivets. Its developers considered making it easier and cheaper to build, so they avoided using complex methods like machining, forging, and casting, which made it very easy to develop just with simple tools and skills. Also, it can be taken apart quickly without needing big machines or ladders. This made it much easier to fix than other aircraft. The BAE system Hawk is an extremely fast aircraft that is used for training. It's mainly used for training pilots, but can also be used as a cheap fighter aircraft. It was originally called the Hawker Siddeley Hawk and later made by British Aerospace and BAE Systems. It is a modern trainer plane with two seats, one behind the other, and a wing attached low on the plane without extra supports. It runs on a single turbofan engine. Ralph Hooper led the team that designed it. Unlike older training planes used by the RAF, the Hawk was made just for training. Hawker made sure it was easy to fix and cheaper to buy and run compared to planes like the Jet Provost. Pilots really like how agile the Hawk is, especially how it rolls and turns. The fuselage design made the instructor's seat higher than the student's seat, giving the instructor a good view. Both seats have special ejection seats made by Martin Baker. Air goes into the engine at the back of the plane through intakes on each side of the front wings. Hawker and Rolls-Royce worked together to make the engine use less fuel and be more reliable while making the plane. Even when they were designing it, they planned for one version of the Hawk to be used as a fighter plane for attacking on the ground. They made both the trainer and fighter versions, thinking about selling them to other countries. In the single-seat versions, where there's usually a pilot, they put in a space for electronics and systems like radar, rangefinders, and infrared cameras. Some countries, like Malaysia, changed their planes a lot, adding things like extra points on the wings to carry weapons and a way to refuel while flying. The Hawk was designed to be easier to move and can fly at a speed of Mach 0.88 when flying straight and Mach 1.15 when diving. Also, its frame is really strong and can handle high forces. 
For an effective performance, it has two hydraulic systems that help to power things like the flaps, brakes, and landing gear, as well as the controls for flying. If the engine stops working, it can rely on the small turbine that is located at the back of the jet to control it, and there's also a smaller engine above the main engine for backup power. The Hawk can carry a big gun underneath its frame, like the 30mm ADN cannon, and has two spots under its wings to attach things. It also has up to four places where it can carry weapons and equipment. In the RAF, some Hawks have been set up to shoot air-to-air -air missiles like the Sidewinder. In the early 1990s, British Aerospace looked into adding missiles like the Sea Eagle for other countries to use. In 2014, BAE Systems was working on a newer version called the Advanced Hawk, with a new wing that has special flaps on the front edge and maybe more sensors and weapons, a special display for the pilot's helmet, and a big screen in the front of the cockpit. The AIRLAC stands for Advanced High Performance Reconnaissance Light Aircraft, and it took the first flight back in 2014 at Wonderboom Airport. After making the airlock, they plan to sell the two units they made. Then, Paramount Group, one of the partners, said they'd work with Boeing on a project called MWARI. After a few years of not much happening and Paramount Group buying airlock, they announced they'd keep making the light fighter aircraft. The airlock could fit two people and was only 34 feet long. The plane could go up to 313 miles per hour and fly 1,325 miles, reaching a height of 31,000 feet. It carried weapons like a 22mm cannon, anti-tank missiles, 250-pound bombs, and 500-pound bombs. It's one of the smallest Soviet planes, only 32 feet long with a 34-foot wingspan. Some people joked it looked like a fish in radioactive waste with big fins, but Stalin deserves credit because it was the first time the Soviet Union made a smaller plane instead of trying to make bigger ones than the U.S. This one was known for being easy to fly. Then the A-29. The development of this aircraft began in 2003, and since then, over 200 units have been built. The Nigerian Air Force purchased over 12 of these fighter jets and there were delivered in mid-2021. This fighter is relatively affordable, especially for countries that are experiencing low threat rates. This fighter jet is equipped with precision-guided munitions and is designed to fly at a maximum speed of over 370 miles per hour. In terms of its size, the jet is about 12 feet long. That's all for the A-29. Let's move on to the next on the list, the Yakovlev-15. The Yak-15 was a Russian fighter plane built right after World War II. It used a special kind of engine and had a body similar to another plane, the Hawk. Only two planes, including the Yak-5, were successfully changed from using a regular engine to a special one. In 1957, these planes were made. Even though it was majorly designed for fighting, it was mostly used to train pilots on how to fly social engines other than the regular jets they are accustomed with. On April 9, 1945, a group told Yakovlev OKB to make a new fighter plane with a German engine. To do it quickly, they used the design of another plane Yakovlev already made. They took out the old engine and put the new one under the front of the plane. They added a shield made of steel underneath to protect it. The front of the plane became deeper, making it look like a pod and a boom. They didn't change much of the metal body except for the front part where they put in two auto cannons, an extra fuel tank, and the engine. They didn't change the wings much except for removing some air intakes. The tail got a bit bigger, but the horizontal part stayed the same. The wheels for landing stayed the same except for the one at the back, which got some extra springs to absorb shock. This new plane could carry about 1,300 pounds of fuel. In October 1945, they started testing the plane by driving it around, but the shield to protect from heat wasn't strong enough to protect it from getting damaged. The heat from the engine melted some parts of the back of the aircraft and the tire of the back wheel. They fixed these problems by Lati December. By then, they had made another version of the plane with a stronger back wheel and a bigger tail wing. 
They did more tests, this time in a big wind tunnel, until February 1946. On the 26th of that month, the developers mentioned that the plane needed to fly really fast and climb quickly. They also wanted it to be able to fly a certain distance. They wanted two planes ready to fly by September 1st for more testing. The next on the list happens to be the coolest long fighter in this group. The fallen Nat was the most powerful jet in the Indian Air Force, and this popularity grew beyond India. The aircraft is 29 feet long and has a wingspan of 22 feet. The jet's engine is called the Bristol Siddeley Orpheus 701 on one turbo jet, which produces a lot of power. It has a wingspan of about 28 feet and 8 inches. When fully loaded, it weighs around 9,040 pounds. It's designed for one pilot to fly. It can carry weapons like 230mm Aiden guns or bombs weighing up to 500 pounds each, or it can carry 18 rockets that are 3 inches wide. The Nat was compared to the British Hawker Hunter and the French Dassault Mystère. During flight tests, they found that the Nat could climb faster and maneuver better. Plus, it cost a lot less than the other planes. Luckily, they have stayed in good shape even after being retired, with many still able to fly. Being a low-cost, high-performance jet, it's hard to find anything better, which was the main goal from the start. The last on the list is the C-17 Globemaster. It is one of the biggest cargo aircraft in the United States Air Force. This jet is capable of carrying over 80 tons of soldiers, supplies, and ammunition. It can quickly transport soldiers and supplies to main bases or directly to bases in the front lines during deployments. It can also carry out tactical airlift and airdrop missions when needed. The flexibility and performance help enhance the overall ability of the airlift system to meet the United States' needs for air transportation around the world. The Globemaster follows many standards for military transport planes. It has a high-set wing that is swept at 25 degrees, a T-tail, a rear cargo loading assembly, and heavy-duty retractable landing gear with fuselage blister fairings. The plane also has a modern glass cockpit with four multi-function displays and a heads-up display for each pilot. It uses a GEC fly-by-wire control system with a stick instead of a traditional yoke. The C-17 is powered by turbofan engines and possesses an Ada bedwing design with winglets and a blown flap system. Also, it is equipped with off-the-shelf and commercial avionics. It has the ability to carry a payload of up to 160,000 pounds and can fly from a 7,600-foot airfield. It can also fly 2,400 nautical miles and land on small airfields in 3,000 feet or less. One main advantage, it can be refueled while in flight. When it comes to its carrying capacity, it can accommodate 18 fully loaded cargo pallets, up to 40 containers for airdrops, troops, medical patients, helicopters, tanks, and armored vehicles. It can carry almost twice as much cargo volume as the C-141B Starlifter and is capable of airdropping cargo and paratroopers. Cargo is loaded through a large ramp door assembly in the rear of the aircraft. It is powered by four Pratt & Whitney PW2040 series turbofans, each rated at 40,440 pounds of thrust. It uses a supercritical wing design for improved range, speed, and fuel efficiency. The winglets at each wingtip enhance efficiency by reducing drag. The jet that is anti-Shi Purim is Russia. It also has a powered lift system that allows for short takeoffs and landings and steep approaches with heavy cargo loads. Composite materials are used extensively in the construction of the aircraft, including control surfaces and secondary structural components. The landing gear system consists of a single nose strut with two wheels and two twin strut tandem gear assemblies. The aircraft is equipped with countermeasure flare dispensers and a missile warning system for defense against threats. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.